for the free fall problem, we have an, an example here. Uh, we have a climber standing on the edge of a cliff, throws a rock vertically downward. The initial velocity of the rock is 14 meters per second straight down. If the rock reaches the ground in three seconds, how tall is the cliff? So the first thing that I always do with these problems is draw myself a picture as to what exactly is happening. So we have a cliff, which we can just represent in the squarest manner possible. Um, and then we have a rock. And then we're going to send that rock straight down. So we know it has an initial velocity. So VI, or V1, is equal to 14 meters per second. Then we know the height or we don't know the height of the cliff, that's what we're looking for. We'll call that H initial, so H1 or HI. And then we know the height of the ground, the bottom of the cliff. We're going to call that H final, and that's going to be equal to zero meters. So with this, we can define a couple of things. Um, first, we're going to define positive to be in the positive y direction. So that's going just basically in the direction of height. So um, the taller something is, something is, the more positive. So with that, we can go ahead and write out some of our givens. So we have the initial velocity, so v sub i. Uh, I have written down here is negative 14 meters per second and that's just to account for the direction of the coordinate system. Uh, the coordinates are basically so that again the taller something is the more positive it is. In this case we're going straight down so the velocity is going to be negative toward the earth. Gravity is also pointing down um, and that's 9.81 meters per second squared the time it takes to reach the bottom of the uh, cliff is three seconds and then we know the final height is going to be right around zero meters and our, our unknown inside of all of this is the initial height how tall is the cliff so um, we have a fairly standard distance equation that's really helpful for free fall um, but we're going to go ahead and modify it so that it's more for what we're looking for specifically. Typically the equation looks like distance final or DF equals DI plus VIT plus AT squared. Oh, and that is a one half AT squared. All right. So with that we can go ahead and turn that so it's so it more mimics the height. Um, by doing that, we can go ahead and say HF is equal to HI plus VIT plus one half GT squared. And G in this case is just the acceleration due to gravity, which is just replacing the A in the equation before. So with this, uh, not not too much that we have to do, just be able to plug in some of these variables and then solve for the initial height. So what I like to do is I actually like to solve for the equation. I like to keep it inside of the form of the variables and then plug in numbers later. So go ahead and solve for h sub i. When you do that, you should get h sub f minus v sub i t minus one half g t squared. All right, is equal to h i. Now go ahead and plug in some of the numbers that you have. So we know h f is going to be equal to zero meters minus vi is equal to minus 14 meters per second times 
our time, which is 3 seconds, minus 1 half times g, negative 9.81 meters per second squared, times time squared. So 3 seconds quantity squared. And when you do this, you will end up with a grand total of 86.14 meters is equal to your initial height.